do you have bathrooms in, on other planets? As aliens, do you poop? No, no. You don't it's poop? Just, we 100% we utilize every nutrient. Wow. <laughs> Zero <laughs> waste. Welcome to a very special episode of the Uniweb Interview Show, the year 2042. Earth has been ransacked by a bunch of zombie people. Super gross. I'm here with Zorg the Conqueror in a space station circling the Earth. Zorg has some form of way to beat the zombie horde back. Zorg, thank you so much for joining me. Thank you for having me, Matt. It's my pleasure. I love having aliens aboard my, my show. So, so tell me, this zombie apocalypse that has befallen the human race, it, it's unthinkable. I never thought it would happen. That's how unthinkable it is. What tell tell me what do you think we should do? Well, I mean, first humans should stop being so delectable because you know then maybe zombies would want to eat you. Do do you do your people eat humans as well, Zorg? Not anymore. I mean we used to before we knew how bad you were for us. Yes, we're full of sugar and fat. That's <laughs> That's horrible. mostly what we're full of. Bad for the cholesterol. Yes. I mean, I wouldn't, I wouldn't eat a human and go right to the doctor. It's like, we're good if we're about to go run a marathon. We're good. So we're just like carbo loading. Yeah, so yeah. Let, let me ask you, Zorg, uh, this, is this your first interview? With a human? Yes. So you do, so you do have uh, interviews with a other alien species? All the time. I'm like the most important alien out here. Come on. Wow. And what what is it you do, Zorg? Well, what do I not do? That's that's a is that a better question? <laughs> <laughs> what don't you do? Well, I don't talk to humans normally. Okay. I have no patience for your kind, and you're pushing it. I am very impatientable. Um, what is it about humans that you hate so much besides everything? Mm, mostly it's your lack of understanding. You see so small. It's only, I, I, I'm in a spaceship now, so like my view is bigger. I can see the <laughs> planet, I can see Earth, I can see bigger now. Does that make me more important and better? I suppose. Let me ask you this. Do you have bathrooms in, on other planets? As aliens, do you poop? No, no. You don't poop? Just, we 100% we utilize every nutrient. Wow. <laughs> Zero <laughs> waste. Zero waste whatsoever. Do, any, do, you, do you have other creatures? Like, uh, like we have dogs on Earth, or we did have dogs. Now they're just zombie dogs. I guess they're still dogs. Um, do you have animals on your planet? Well, of course. We all have to have something that we can rule over, right? I guess. I mean, what, what are your animals like? Can you give me an example of an animal on your planet? Well, my, my favorite pet had eight arms and two legs and nine eyes, and he was about this tall. How... <laughs> How tall? Not this tall. Zorg, I've heard rumors that you're not a very tall alien. Is this I, true? I had it. I know this was coming. <laughs> what? I people people believe aliens to be of a taller race, uh, but you're you're extremely short for your I, for your kind. I am apparently, from what I've heard, I just have a long neck. You have a long neck, like so kind of, you're kind of like a giraffe. Yeah, yeah. I can read you know, things with my neck. Are you, 
Do you, is all your are your food sources up high on your planet? Well, I mean, there's there's a variation. There's things that grow high and things that grow low, just like on your Earth. What a silly question. I that is what I do. I ask silly questions. So, how tall are you, Zorg? I don't see how that's relevant to this interview, but I am five foot and three inches, I believe, is how you how you humans say. I don't know. I don't. I use the metric system, and it confuses <laughs> the hell out of me. <laughs> I think I think Americans use the imperial system, which is again, I don't understand that. Um, anyway, so you're a tiny alien. That's great. What? What are you capable? Do you have superpowers of any sort? I can control things telepathically, move things without actually having to move my body, which is awesome whenever, you know, I want to binge Netflix. <laughs> <laughs> Interesting. You know, I used to know somebody on Earth who was a very weird, strange human being. They were also very short and tiny in stature. They were a writer, and uh, they would never think humans were of that ilk, that we were horrible, irresponsible people. Have you ever, have you ever uh, read a book called Blood Drops? No, no, I, I don't think I have. I'm pretty sure it's the international bestseller. <laughs> you mean galactic bestseller? It's a gal yeah, it's a universal bestseller. You haven't heard of it? No, no, I don't think so. I would like to uh, I would like to learn more about this. Well, you're lucky. Today's your lucky day, Zorg. Thank because you came on the show, I've brought a special guest with me. Have you? Yes. Would you like to meet her? Yes, very much. Okay, take off your mask, Zorg. <laughs> Ah! <laughs> WB. Surprise. Hi. I'm pretty sure. I'm pretty sure nobody had any clue what was going on. Uh, we didn't even know what was going on. No, I don't know what's going on. So we're still here in the future. Nothing's changed. Uh, but that's not Zord. That's WB, author of Blood Drops, and WB. We have. It's been. It's been a few months. I mean, years. <laughs> it's been over 20 years since the last time we talked. Um, you've become a huge success. Thank you. I had, uh, had to prepare myself to lose the voice. I forgot for a second I was about to stay in character. <laughs> yeah, you're about to go back to Zorg. <laughs> yes. Um, I've, uh, I keep waiting, I guess, for the momentum to die down, but each time it does, it seems like a new round of people kind of learn about it and it sells a few more copies and it's really awesome. So I'm, I'm very appreciative and excited every time a new copy sells. Are you being recognized on the streets for your <laughs> accomplishments? No, 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 I can still blend in just fine. Because I, f I feel like, honestly, you've, I mean, I remember, I remember yesteryear when it was you you had just you had just released blood drops and it was it was a successful it was successful when it first came out and your momentum started to build and you were selling copies like crazy and you started putting out these uh these uh what are they called things like collectible merchandise co collectible merchandise <laughs> that's right and now all of a sudden it's like you can't go anywhere without seeing you. Um, but this isn't the only project you're working on, is that right? That is correct. Now, with the success of Blood Drops, how have you had time to work on anything else? I don't sleep much. I drink a lot of coffee. I have like yeah. zero work-life balance. That's, is that my spaceship <laughs> falling apart? <laughs> This was uh, designed by the lowest bidder, by the way. Uh, this is an Elon Musk edition spaceship. Um, so you don't sleep at all. That's good. That's great. That's good for a writer. Yeah, yeah. 
Do you have a lot of crazy thoughts? Yes, actually. I have a lot of random thoughts. Like, not not what you might think with me being a horror writer. I'm not just walking around thinking like, oh, they can die like that. But it's just, I never know where my mind is, is going to connect the dots and, and lead to. And sometimes I come up with some of the weirdest stuff. Well, I want to know because you're writing the, the, the book you got, you're writing now and you're not writing it alone, correct? Mm, that's correct. Let's talk about that. You're, you're writing this, no, is it a novella? Yes, yes, novella. it'll be a novella link. About zombies. It's about zombies. Let's, I think I'm safe for now to take off. Is it safe? It's okay. It's safe. I, I want to know, who are you writing this with? I'm writing it with the infamous Freckle, Tori Hunter. <laughs> the infamous Freckle. <laughs> yes. Why? <laughs> <laughs> Why is her name Party Freckle? <laughs> Why you know, is it? I've never asked. That's a good You've question. Never asked? You never no, asked I, that? I just assumed she had freckles. I have freckles. I think it's a good name. Have you guys but, not met in person? No, no. We just DM like all the time. Really? Yeah. Wow. What's it going to be like when you meet in person for the first time? Probably extremely weird. Like, because we've had so many conversations, but none of it face to face. So, well, I mean, you're writing a book together. Yeah, we just is the book is the book done? No, not yet. Okay. Don't worry, it won't be long. I was I um I was gonna say I thought I had I had talked to you a little bit before about this. Um, that you guys are working on. How is it like you guys aren't DMing each other a bunch of like <laughs> like drafts, are you? I mean, you're no. you know, like, no, we we email the drafts. We okay. uh, we we talk back and forth, awkward. kind of about like some ideas in in DMs. But uh, pretty much like we don't know what the other person is gonna say. Um, we we surprise each other. So she writes her stuff and then sends it to me, and then I read it, and then I write my stuff. How's the process been writing together with a partner? A lot better than I was expecting. I have to be honest, like not because of Tori, but like, you know, just when I was earlier on pondering if I would ever work with the co-author. Um, one, I never thought it would be this early on in my career. But then two, I wondered what it would be like to work with another creative because I never have. Anytime I've worked with somebody, it's been, you know, in a business setting. Um, but it's, it's very seamless and, you know, we discuss ideas and neither one of us is too, atta too attached to our own ideas that we don't hear the other one out. And it's, uh, it's been going really, really well. I, I love being surprised whenever it's my turn to write. Do you ever think like, do you ever get to like, when you write your part and then like, she'll be like, no, that's not that great. Are you like, what do you know? I hate you. Never talk to me again. You guys getting that kind of? No, no, she hasn't said it, that my stuff's not that great. <laughs> okay, good. Do you say that her stuff isn't that great? No, no, there's been just like a small couple of changes where it's like, oh, this is a little inconsistent or like, oh, this doesn't line up too well, so we'll have to change this. But overall, like for the big story picture, I think we both see it so well, like as being this the same type of... Uh, we have the same vibe, I guess, and so it's it's coming together without us really having to dictate that too much. So I want to know what's it's a zombie no novella. Mm -hmm. I've written a zombie novella. It's different, but is what is? Have you taken? Some, sorry, my alien was moving. <laughs> have you have you done something? What have you done with the zombie novella genre? Are you taking a new new approach at it? Are you going um, after old old ways of doing it? Like, what's the, what's the storyline? If you can talk talk about that, I don't know how mu how much I can say because we haven't talked about what we want to say publicly. So I would hate to say something and then she'd be like, "No, I wasn't ready to say that yet." But it is um, it's a <laughs> 
It's in this a... is all live, by the way. So. Oh yay! Um, <laughs> it's in a uh, residential setting, and it it doesn't really like we're not. Hey, we have to get away and going across the country type of thing. It's more focused on um, the interactions amongst the people who are living in this situation. So there's a lot of people to people drama while they're trying to survive. It's not solely focused on just living. So it's within a community, mm -hmm. right? Um, how many characters are you focusing on at once? Is it like multiple, multiple characters or do you have one main character? That you're that you're working with two main characters we each <clears throat> we're each writing our own person's parts oh sweet that okay so that makes it i guess i would i would say that makes it probably a little bit easier yeah um, you guys are almost running like linear storylines with each other then right yeah it's really it's really awesome the way that it's the way that it's going so how did this zombie apocalypse come about um, like, are you asking how the story started or how the actual, in the story, how the apocalypse started? Yeah, how the apocalypse started. Oh, I can't say that. You have to read it to find that out. Ah! <laughs> okay. Uh, <laughs> 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 I'm going to read it, I promise. Just tell me. Um, <laughs> when is the novella, so when's the novella coming out? I think we're hoping for late spring, early summer. So so very soon. Yes. So it the whole thing—I'm the one that keeps holding up. Like it's my turn to write, and it has been again for like four days. So. Oh, but yeah. you've been goofing off making space masks. Yeah, I've been <laughs> spent a ridiculous amount of hours making an alien head. <laughs> it was totally worth it. <laughs> totally, it was Two worth. Two oil trips, a trip to Party City. I know Party City is the best. Oh yeah, we got lots of good stuff at Party City. Yeah. Um, so how did the, how did the whole zombie thing come about? Like, why did you guys decide you wanted to write a zombie novella? After it was actually her idea. Okay. Um, I I don't know where it, it came from. She just hit me up one day and asked if I wanted to uh, if I'd be interested, and I was like, heck yeah! I uh, had never planned on writing anything about zombies on my own, and so. Uh, I was actually really surprised when I got into it how much I liked it. Not that I don't like zombies, but I just, you know, wasn't expecting to go that route, I guess, with my horror. And uh, I really am enjoying it a lot. Like, it's made me want to watch so many more zombie movies and look for more zombie books. Zombies are really cool. And I was going to say, because your horror isn't necessarily in that vein, isn't like a Night of the Living Dead type of writing horror. Um, is this book meant to be scary, lighthearted? Is it supposed to be like uplifting? Like what, what kind of, um, theme do you feel the, the book has or what kind of feel do you feel it has? Oh, come on. You know me. <laughs> it's it's going to be like, <laughs> be like psychological warfare. Yeah. And oh, yeah. Perfect. We, we don't, we're not, we're not going for the, the feel good. Everything is resolved at the end. It's it's going to be dark and gritty and, you know, make you want to turn away. Make you want to throw it away? No, turn away. Like, ah. oh, turn away. Run away. Um, is there is there plans for more? Like, is this going to be part of a series of novellas, like zombie novellas? We haven't discussed that, but I wasn't planning on doing more Blood Drops originally, so we'll see what happens. Oh, yeah, Blood Drops 2. Blood Drops 2. Yes, it's going to happen. That's amazing. And I'm going to try to make it longer. Oh, sorry, what? I was going to say, have you started working on it already? No, no, not yet. Um, I'll start probably in about two or three weeks, um, starting to get some stories ready. And I want to make this one probably about double the length physically. I mean, the feedback you've gotten for Blood Drops has been, like, unbelievable. Absolutely. People people are enjoying it and they like I think the the variety, the short story and people usually end up saying all they wish was that there was more of it. So I was like, okay, let's make a longer one next time. Let's do more. Yeah. That's, have you so you've obviously gotten a ton of I haven't seen one bad review about it. Have you gotten any bad reviews 
about Blow uh-huh. Dry? You have? Yeah. Because I, I feel like I've, I've seen it as a five star review for everything. Like it's. There's a there's a few two and three, and I think there was a one star. I think there was one star. Most Ooh. of the time, it's a. Uh, it a lot of people don't like the look being in there. That's not everybody's favorite story. Mm. And uh, some people like have commented and said they didn't feel like it was horror and that it was just a random arrangement and uh, I don't remember exactly, but it's there. It's 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 interesting when um, you have so much good feedback, and obviously this is your well, it's your first publication that's been out there. I mean, you've written another book and stuff, but like that's really been out there for you. How did it feel when you got that negative feedback? It really wasn't too big of a deal on on this book. I got a few on my first book too, and that really bothered me at a time. Um, but it was a year or two ago that I read the book, um, The Light Between Oceans. And mm-hmm. I absolutely fell in love with that book. I loved the language. It was another author's debut novel. I thought it was brilliant for a debut. And then I got onto Goodreads and people were ripping it to shreds. Like, you know, Mm. they didn't like the writing. They didn't like the main character. And after I saw that, I was like, well, I can't expect to get all perfect reviews if this book doesn't. So, like, when I see bad reviews now, I always think of that. And it kind of helps remind me, like, you know, it's all opinion. Yeah. And we know we just never know. Right. Like everybody doesn't always have to like the genre you're in. That's a you took it great because. I took it like a baby. I mean, <laughs> my alien remembers when I got my first review back. It was it was a two star, and I was like, I feel like I wanted to give up. <laughs> um, I've definitely been there. It just not this time, but um, actually, about six months ago, I was kind of getting ready to throw in the towel on writing. Interestingly enough, why? What happened six months ago? I was just, I felt like I'd been plaguing away at it for a while. And not that I wasn't going to write still, but that I would take a break from actively seeking publication, that I was going to take a step back, maybe work on some different books, um, focus on uh, cultivating another career, so to speak, you know, for money making. And then I somehow ended up on Twitter and things kind of got crazy after that the world exploded yeah twitter is a great platform yeah absolutely for doing business i'm so glad you didn't quit writing i'm sure you are too <laughs> oh, yeah all the time I, I i still remember and i still remember how it felt like it's it's such a a defeating moment to feel like maybe i just can't do this but i've i've actually had that before as well when i was learning how to ride a motorcycle um I took the course and got my license, but then I bought a bike that was about 450 pounds. It was a 1000 CC. And it took me like six months after that to really learn how to ride it. And about three months in, I was like, I don't know. I just, maybe I just can't do this. And so I say that like anybody who's thinking about giving up on anything that you're trying, don't ever stop. Don't quit yourself. I mean, that's, with anything in life, right? That's, that's so true. And writing does teach you that, I think, the most. Like, I don't know if the most, but for, I feel like it's it's easy to sit down and write. It's much easier to sit down and write than it is to maybe go out and get on a motorcycle because the li- the threat of life <laughs> is much <laughs> less if you're sitting at a computer writing than if you're on a motorcycle on the yeah. freeway. So you, you still ride motorcycles? Not right now. It actually got stolen what yeah that was that we got home that day and i thought my boyfriend was pranking me and i was like okay where is it haha ha. he's like no babe for real and i was like okay no haha ha. he's like N- no it's oh. gone <laughs> <laughs> sorry it's alien you can't you can't find good alien help these days they're just like in the background making all kinds of noises <laughs> we're having an interview here <laughs> Sorry. Um, lost my train of thought. And, uh, oh yeah, you had, you had a, uh, you went to a convention, not a convention, but like a, um, thing 
yeah, out in Texas for selling books yes. recently, right? Yes. What was that? What was that called? It was the uh, Take 190 <laughs> Book and Art Festival in huh? Killeen, Texas. Um, I think it was the fourth or fifth year they've done this one in particular. Um, I think they had about 75 go through total. So it wasn't huge, but it was nice. I got to meet a lot of new authors. Um, actually got to meet another gentleman who was writing a zombie zombie books and um this cool lady who came up with an idea of in the future you're able to freeze genetically freeze your baby until you're ready to bring it home so i had to pick up a copy of that of course that sounds like it's right up my alley right what you yeah it's freeze, called, uh, like, so they, they have the baby and then they freeze them mm -hmm. and so that you can plan you know it's a cryogenic thing whenever it's convenient for you wow <laughs> oh, but that's called uh, Postponement is the title of that book. That is an, that sounds like an insane story. So this is somebody festival. you met at the convention, at the festival? Yes, yes. She was actually an author who was set up just across from me. So we were, you know, staring at each other all day. <laughs> so besides meeting, meeting other cool authors there, did you have a, uh, did you have a big turnout for like people who wanted to check out Blood Drops and... Did you, was it to sell copies of Blood Drops and sign autographs and stuff like that? Yeah, um, mostly selling and uh, selling the books and merchandise. And a couple people from Twitter did come out to to hey. see me, which was awesome. Um, it, I got pretty much two reactions: either they walk by and they're like, "Oh, this looks good," or they're like, "Oh, I don't do horror." <laughs> so, but pretty much everybody who walked by who didn't give me the whole. Oh, face bought a copy i think that like if they would read your book though they would understand because like i don't do horror either but i read i've like i've enjoyed your book because it's, actually it's, it's not like traditional traditional horror in a sense that like there's people getting their heads cut off and like you know crazy crap like that like gory kind of horror it's it's more like psychological like sh human based horror where things are ha terrible things are happening to people mentally psychologically they're having to deal with yeah i think i think at some point we've some a lot of the, the the mass has forgotten that horror isn't always about blood and gore or monsters that it's just supposed to make you uncomfortable it's supposed to make you feel antsy or your heart race or it's supposed to disgust you and like that's really a broad category. It can really be taken to a lot of places because so many people are offended by different things. And when I say offended, it's a very broad category, but just in general, you know, put off by. <laughs> I know people who are offended by smiling. Some people get <laughs> you gotta be careful nowadays. <laughs> and they're right. You can't just yeah. smile at everybody. You can't just smile at people. They're like, You think it's that easy? <laughs> hey don't smile do you think life's so easy <laughs> you, you want to take this outside we're already outside bro <laughs> so i i really i want i want to know more about the zombie novella what more can you tell me about it I, hmm. because I, remember this you have no idea when this is coming out right this the interview yeah yeah, yeah. that's um well i can tell you that there are two lead female characters. Okay. Um, there's definitely a contrast to their personalities. Um, so you can, I think, feel the difference between the, the two whenever you're switching the point of view. Um, okay. I think it's, it's unique in its setup in the way that it's being written in the view that you're given of everybody. I think, again, I think people who don't really do zombies will enjoy this book just because there is so much um real life going on around it and and again it's not it's not in a uh, a um a setting where it's it's unrealistic and there's explosions and and all that it's i feel like it's a more accurate representation of what might actually happen if the world was overrun by zombies and there's some people that are trying to do their best to make it through 
Like trying to bunker down in a house kind of deal. You said that, not me. I'm not giving it away. <laughs> no, it's not what happens. I think we're on to something here. <laughs> um, that, what's that Alfred Hitchcock movie? Um, where the guy is looking at his neighbor. No, that's not it. Never mind. Rindo? That what? Rorindo. Rear window. No, not that one. Don't worry about it. It's. <laughs> I was thinking of the one where Shia LaBeouf is in the neighborhood, but then that wasn't right. And then I was thinking of the one where Tom Hanks was in a neighborhood, and like there's all like culty stuff going on. You know what I'm talking the about? Burbs. The Burbs. Yeah, the Burbs. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. That's it's like that. That one. I don't know. It's like is this? <laughs> This is the future. <laughs> I need to know. You'll know future. soon, soon in the future, in the past. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that makes sense. In the past so, okay, where can we where can we buy the Blood Drops merchandise? Because I saw I saw you post something on it about it on Twitter, and then I didn't see anything else about it. Where can um, I where can we get our hands on some Blood Drops merchandise? I actually made a e-store, an online store for myself. It's by wbwelch.com, like B-U-Y. So yeah, if you want to buy my stuff, then you can buy me. Like B-U-Y, buy? Yeah, yeah, by wbwelch.com. And you can buy all the, the cool... Did you make that stuff? Yes and no. Like, I ordered the glass pendants. I contacted a glass blower and, and had her make some bulk pieces for me. And then I tied the necklaces. And I actually ordered the different pieces and built the little story charms. Um, the candles I, I ordered and had somebody else make. But everything that is assembled, I, I put it together and planned it and everything. Remember, I told you, no sleep. I know. It's it's incredible. How how much money do you have now? Oh, <laughs> I've spent so much more than I've made. <laughs> like you know, building it, it and and uh, cuz I have two more events coming up too. I don't know if, if do you they'll... pay for the events or do they invite yeah. you you pay for them, right? Yeah, there's 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 fees associated. Yeah. Like expos or whatever. Yeah. Um, it's still nice to get like a check cuz I get a very measly check from Amazon <laughs> every month, which is what afforded this spaceship. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, it's usually like a surprise dinner or something. It's like, hey, I have cash. Let's go eat. <laughs> yeah, because I forget about it completely. Yeah, me too. <laughs> Absolutely forget about it. And I look at my account and I'm like, $13. <laughs> 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 it's like the greatest gift ever. Um, so we just got to keep putting out books and then that, that'll build, right? Do you, do you, that's one thing that, that people are talking about, like do 20 books, make $50,000. Like, is that something that you're ascribing to? Like get as many books out there as possible, as soon as possible? Or are you? My plan's not that large. I, I am enjoying what's happening. I put out blood drops on a whim and it did well. And now here I am co-writing a novella and planning blood drops too. I'm still querying. Um, I have one, you know, one novel that I'm querying and another one that I want to finish to start querying. And if I get picked up by an agent and that goes traditional, you know, my career will go that way. If that never happens, then I'll stick with self and 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 just keep putting out the the good scary stuff. That's because you also you're you're doing the um, editing and and you're helping. Uh, critique query letters and that kind of thing as a business as well right mm -hmm. we've we've kind of paused that or taken a step back for a while um to try to uh leave some room to get this novella wrapped up and we she has a book she wants to finish and start querying as well um so we're both trying to leave ourselves some creative time but yeah we're we have that going too so this is future time okay oh yes we're in the future. I forgot. I'm sorry. This is future time. So let's just say, really, 10 years from now, WB, how do you picture your life? Is it on a spaceship? 
or or what? Like, what do you what do you see yourself doing in ten years? It, it would be awesome if we had some some hover cars by then, but I'm definitely <laughs> hoping to be a, a bestseller on some shelves and uh, living on a beach somewhere. Well, you got to be careful talking about living on a beach. You've seen Castaway, right? <laughs> I think I could deal. I've got enough voices in my head. Yeah, you hang out with Wilson and the crew. Yeah. But, like, you, so you what, like, move into, like, the Bahamas or something? No, just any, I just want to be near a big body of water. I love oceans and lakes, and I've lived in the middle of Texas my whole life. Oh, yeah. There's not a lot of water there. <laughs> so you plan you plan to get out of uh out of Texas? Yeah. Most yeah. likely. Letting uh letting the the kiddo finish out school here. He has friends. He's he's been around his whole life, so Yeah. We're waiting patiently. You have a kid? You, you didn't know? No. I have a 16-year-old. What? <sighs> True. What are you like 26, 27? Thank you. No. Just <laughs> I don't know math. <laughs> I didn't think you were old enough to have a. I mean, especially a sixteen-year-old. I mean, I was young. I was young, young. Yeah. Yeah. I uh, had him while I was finishing up high school and starting college. Wow. And how how is it having? Um, does your does your son read your books? <laughs> no. No? no, he's he's pretty adamant against reading, actually, as much as possible. <laughs> Why? I don't know. Maybe it's because I used to make him read when he was a kid, but he's uh -oh. it's never it's never been his pastime. He's he enjoys socializing and and talking and and playing games more than he enjoys uh, reading and and sitting on his own. Like, even when he plays games, he always plays online games because he likes to interact with other people. Yeah. That's, I mean, it's cool. I, I've tried online gaming. It's very dangerous. There's a lot of mean nine-year-olds out there. I was bullied mercilessly. My son was probably one of them. Is he mean? On, I feel like they just get online and cuss at each other. He has a YouTube channel, actually. You should check it out. I'll have to send you Yeah, one. what's his YouTube channel? Um, it's, he just, it's Dot Quack. Dot quack like dot yeah. quack. Yeah, I think there's a space in there. He just changed it recently, but that's his his uh his gamer handle is like but period quack like dot quack. So his channel is dot quack. What does he play? Fortnite mostly. Fortnite. Yeah, that's when I was getting. You remember? I was. Yeah, he was getting schooled by some nine year olds. They were, they were like, shut up. <laughs> they were like telling me to shut up and like I was just. I was like, can we just be friends? They're <laughs> intense, man. <laughs> they are intense. I just like I don't even want to play video games anymore. Cause... I don't play online. I what play by my I mean except for Dead by Daylight, but there's no microphone, so Dead by Daylight. Oh, that's the one that's like um not Freddy Krueger, Jason, right? Yeah, or... Freddy Krueger's in it too. Uh oh. Freddy, Michael, um, who else do they have? They have the saw chick with the pig head, but they don't call them that, you know, because of copyright and all. They give them different names, but it's I love that game. That's a that's an online multiplayer game, right? Mm -hmm. That's the only one I play. <laughs> yeah, that's scary. What so that? they get to kill people. Um, dawn. Uh, what was it called? Uh, Until dawn. Until dawn. Yeah, we still we were playing that one. Have you played that? Yeah. Do you, you like it? Yeah, that one's pretty good. I, I, I actually watched my boyfriend play through it. And had to uh, had to play my own rounds. It was I enjoyed it. I mean, I had a, a badger jump out of me. It scared the crap out of her. <laughs> I had some heart. I had some heart attacks. I think it, they they their jump scares were really good. What were you, what were the things you were most scared of? Because mine was like needles and uh, it was like needles and I think rats was one of them. Yeah, you said that's why the rat jumped out at you. Yeah, needles and rats. Oh, you it's yours? been a while. I don't remember, but I know one of them was the dark because I'm actually really afraid of the dark. You're afraid of the dark? <laughs> yes. You still wet the bed? No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> like sometimes I legit I have to turn on a light whenever I'm like going to the kitchen and it's night or something. 
do you, do you ever do you feel like there's do you ever feel like there's a something behind you when you're in the dark? Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Why do you think I can yeah. write so well? <laughs> That's interesting. Do you think there actually is? Like do you think there are ghosts around you all the time? I mean, like, I believe in ghosts, but no, I'm one of those people that's like, oh, it's not going to happen to me, but, like, it still scares me. Like, I still get weirded out. Well, I feel like you can invite bad spirits into your life, right? Mm-hmm. It's really dark. I, can, I can't see. I'm you can't scared. see me? Yeah. <laughs> we have to sleep with the closet and the bedroom, or the closet and the bathroom door shut. Like, we make sure it's shut. Right, I, close the, I close the closet door. Yeah, it's too scary if it's open. It is. There's like things that can come out of there. Do you ever, did you ever read like Stephen King short stories like The Boogeyman? Did you read that one? But he is like, anyway. I don't think I've read that one. I've read a lot of his shorts, but I don't think I've read that one. Yeah. The Boogeyman? It's called The Boogeyman, yeah. I'll have to find it. It's a good one. It. One of the scariest things ever growing up, and I, it's one of the things that's made me like, I have to, I can't look in the mirror at night. My brother, we were, we were at a family reunion in Kentucky. I was maybe nine years old. And I got a room to myself for the first time in my life. And I went in the room and there was a mirror in the room. And my brother comes in before bed and he's like, oh, you got a mirror in your room? And I was like, yeah. He was like, mirrors are windows to hell. <laughs> I was oh, like, no. screw this, man. I'm sleeping in the living So I went and slept in the living room on the floor. Oh. Oh. Older, older siblings. That's, that's terrifying. Should, have since you, we're, huh? I was gonna say, have you ever done the, like Bloody Mary in the? No, movie? actually, I'm. I and I still won't. You, I wouldn't be in the bathroom with anybody doing it just because. Why risk it? That's what I'm saying. <laughs> like, yeah, maybe it doesn't happen the first ten times or whatever. But what if it does happen? <laughs> yeah, I don't You're, mess with Ouija boards either. Me neither. I was gonna say I don't mess with Ouija boards either. Don't play around with those things. Nope. <laughs> Yeah, there's just no point in taking the chance. Since there's... we were shop swapping scary stories, I can tell you one of whenever I was young. Okay. Let's I hear remember it. most horrifying moment ever. I think I was four or five, and we had just seen Adam's family. Mm -hmm. And I fell asleep on the couch and woke up very disoriented because obviously I didn't mean to fall asleep down there. And it was dark, and I didn't like sleeping in the dark. And coming through the light, there was just enough, or coming through the window, there's just enough light to cast a shadow on our plant, and it looked like a hand shadow on the wall. And I lost my shit. <laughs> <laughs> I had never ran into my mom's room so fast. I was absolutely terrified. I just knew he came to get me. Oh my gosh! Were you like blood, blood curdling scream? For your Actually, mom? when I get scared, I don't scream. I go silent. Like, I lose my breath and my ability to talk and even really think. Like, it's bad. Interesting. My cousin scared me one time whenever I was carrying laundry and I, he grabbed my ankle and I collapsed and dropped all of my laundry and made some weird grunting noise. It was, it was horrible. I never, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I was like, oh. <laughs> I never heard the end of it. It's so, it's so crazy what our body does when it's, it jumps into survival mode like we're so ill-equipped to deal with any bad things i feel like i mean for me that's the same stuff like i freeze up like crazy like my i start crying <laughs> such a baby <laughs> like just start crying my heart is beating out of my chest i can't breathe like i thought that fight or flight was supposed to help you sure. not like turn you into a complete loser <laughs> we're, we're gonna... just possums yeah, I think so. Just play dead. Yep. Like, by literally killing yourself, play dead. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> no, no, you already did it. You scared me to death. You don't have to do anything else. I'm dead. It's unbelievable. I, I don't know. But I, I'm, glad you, I'm glad you're getting to overcome your fears through your writing some. And you're sitting in the dark right now, which is great. But it, I, I guess it's because you have company. No, I mean, the, the light's on out there. It's not actually dark. It's just... No windows in my office. Can you see over your shoulder? Huh? Can you see what's over your shoulder right now? <laughs> <laughs> gotcha. Hey, WB, I, um, I don't know what else to talk about, but I, I, I really appreciate you coming on because this was something 
that uh, I think party freckle. <laughs> she she uh, Tori Hunter she she brought up in like a tweet thread that you should come on again because I was trying to get her to come on too, and uh, but she was like you you should come on we should do something. And this has been like I was. I've been so excited about doing this, and I love the idea of like being on a spaceship and just being completely ridiculous. Because that's where I love to be in this ridiculous space. And I want to thank you so much for taking the time to be ridiculous with me. I appreciate you having me. I always enjoy, I always enjoy chatting with you. And I love your show, and I had an absolute blast building this alien head. And now I know what I'm going to be for Halloween. It's, you have it forever now. Uh, uh, yeah, there's actually a t-shirt of mine in here at the top to build the foil. Can I tell you, 10 years from now, when this show is one of the most popular shows on YouTube or on the internet, that will be worth untold amount of cryptocurrency. <laughs> <laughs> well, we'll have to sign it. Or whatever, or whatever we're... Uh, we're using to barter then, like teeth or <laughs> pubic <laughs> hair, or something. What I don't know. I don't know. What we'll, I don't know what we'll be using by then. Grains of dirt. Yeah, gra- yeah we'll be doing something uh, different than money. So, thanks again. I really appreciate it. I have to now get up and the. This is where the movie magic stops. Oh no. Uh, Thank you guys so much for watching this video. If you would, subscribe to the channel and hit that notification for the bell. You know what? We love you. Love you. Love you. You know what?